This is a mini lesson on Newton's second law. Uh, Newton's first law told us what happens if there is not any net force on an object. Either it will stay at rest or it will keep moving with the same speed and direction that it had before. Newton's second law tells us what will happen if there is a net force on an object. Okay. And Newton's second law is easiest to write down in equation form, so that's how we'll do it. Okay. Newton's second law of motion. And this is actually one of the most important equations in physics. So if you're studying for some uh, pre-professional exam, this is definitely one of the ones you want to put on your list to memorize. Okay. So Newton's second law can be written in equation form like this. Oop. That's just supposed to be an equal sign. Okay, where? Uh, let's go over each term separately. So uh, this symbol right here, the first symbol, is a capital sigma. Uh, and this stands for sum of, so you want to add up everything. F stands for force, not surprisingly, since Newton's second law is about force. Uh, M stands for the mass of the object. And A is the acceleration, just like uh, it was in previous chapters. Okay, so Newton's second law tells us what happens if there is a net force on an object. If there is a net force on an object, then, well, it will accelerate. In other words, it will not continue moving in the same speed and direction. It will change either direction or speed or both. How much will it accelerate? Well, that depends on the mass. Uh, a, an object with a large mass will not accelerate very much. And an object with a small mass uh, will uh, accelerate more. Uh, let's do an example, a simple example where we just have uh, one force, so we don't really have to worry about the sum part of this. Uh, and that'll also give us a chance to talk about the units that we need to use in this equation. Okay, so uh, first we'll just say, well, what if we have uh, a uh, 700 kilogram car, so maybe 1,500 pounds or so, regular size car, a fairly small one, 700 kilogram car uh, that uh, accelerates uh, at, let's say, 2 meters per second squared. And let's find the net force on it. Okay, well, this is pretty simple. We're looking for the sum of all of the forces, which is another way of saying the net force, by the way. This whole term right here means net force, because the definition of net force is what you get when you add up all the forces on an object. So the sum of all of the forces on the car, the net force, is equal to the mass of the car, which is 700 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared, the acceleration of the car. And the result is 1,400 kilogram meters per second squared. So that's easy enough. Now, uh, this unit, the kilogram meter per second squared, shows up a lot. It shows up any time we're talking about force. And it's a pretty cumbersome unit. Uh, so we give that unit combination a special name. We will call that unit combination the Newton. It has an abbreviation of a capital N, and it's spelled out 
Newton. Okay, so anytime you see Newton, you can replace that with kilogram meter per second squared or vice versa. Uh, that also means that whenever you're using Newton's second law, you want to make sure that you always put your mass in in kilograms, uh, any distances you have in meters, and any time units you have in seconds, so that at the end you will end up with a force in newtons. Okay, well, uh, what if there's more than one force on the object? Uh, this time I just asked us to find the net force on it. But uh, what if we have some other forces? Uh, for example, uh, let's say, and I'm going to clear the top half of this screen, okay? So we can use what we've got down there at the bottom, but I don't have to um, run short on space. Okay, well, what if this car has um, um, uh, if there's an air resistance? opposes the acceleration that we just found at 2 meters per second squared uh, with a force of 500 newtons. Let's find the forward force on the car. Okay, we're going to use, again, Newton's second law, which is the sum of all of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Well, uh, the left side of this equation, I need to add up all the forces. So I have two forces on the car this time. We have the force of air resistance, which opposes the acceleration, and we find whatever forward force it is that's pushing the car forward in the uh, positive direction. So let's call the forward force F sub little f, okay. and the 500 Newton force of air resistance is going to be a negative one because it's opposing the acceleration. So since the forward force and air resistance are in opposite directions and force is a vector, I need those to have opposite signs. Okay. And that's got to be equal to the mass of the car, which is still 700 kilograms, times the acceleration of the car, which is still 2 meters per second squared. Okay. So I get then that the forward force on the car is equal to 1,400 newtons. And then I need to add 500 newtons to both sides to get uh, the forward force isolated. So you end up with a forward force of 1,900 newtons. So what that tells us is this forward force is 1,900 newtons. Air resistance is 500 newtons in the opposite direction. The net force is then 1,400 newtons, which results in an acceleration of 2 meters per second on the car. OK. Uh, let's do a conceptual question, one of these. Uh, conceptual check yourself questions. So I'm going to clear the board. Pause if you're still taking notes. OK, this car that was just accelerating at 2 meters per second squared, 
what was providing that forward force? On the car. Was it the engine? Tires, both of those, or the road. Pause this, think about it, commit to an answer on your own. Nobody will know whether you got it right but you. Uh, and uh, then continue when you're ready to see the explanation. Okay, well, the correct answer is D, because remember, um, this sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. This is the net outside force, or the net external force. In other words, anything that accelerates the car has got to come from outside the car. You, the car cannot exert a net force on itself. Uh, the only one of these things that uh, is external to the car is the road. So if you're thinking, wait a minute, the road's just sitting there, how can it exert a force on the car? Well, the answer to that question involves Newton's third law. And for that, you'll have to watch the next mini-lesson.